Hi there, this is Kit Pang, the founder of Boston Speaks, and in this video, I want to share with you some of the best things that I am going to do to improve my communication skills in 2019. You see, a lot of people, when it comes to improving your communication skills, it's sometimes a little bit harder because unlike fitness, if we want to get a six-pack, many people can just search up, okay, what do we exactly need to do when we go to the gym? I need to do X amount of crunches. But when it comes to communication or public speaking skills, many people don't know what exactly it is that they want to do. Some of the very first things that I will talk about are not about communicating with others first, it's about knowing how to communicate with yourself. So tip number one, if you want to be a better communicator, first you have to know how to plan. Because if your mind is jumbled up, how can you be clear? How can you be articulate when you, ha when you have so many things to do, right? The problem in 2019 and beyond is that we have too many tabs open in our minds. I use something called the self journal. Of course, I, I don't work for them, but I've been using this for around two years now because again, if you don't know why you're doing things nowadays, we are, we are so busy. You go from meeting to meeting without knowing why you're going to those meetings. Do you know why you're doing the next thing that you're doing? Uh, what I love about this journal is helps me, I'm gonna, this sounds a little bit silly, but talk to myself and planning, hmm, what are the result goals that I want? Uh, so this is always 13 weeks. What are the result goals that I want to accomplish right, within three months? After that, it breaks it up into by weeks. By week, what do I want to accomplish this week? And then you can fill out every single day. So what I like to do is, hmm, I like to schedule out my work and my, my play at the same time. I'm like, okay, what do I need to do today? What do I do, need to do next week? And what this really helped me with is basically, they gave you a chart where you can put down your morning ritual, your night ritual, and I added something that's, um, not a lot of people do midday ritual. So here's what I do. I wash my face and I meditate for five minutes. Why did I put wash your face? I was listening to Pharrell, uh, you know, the singer who sang Happy. And in the interview, he said, uh, someone asked him, how, how is your face so, uh, so clean and so fresh? You know what he said? He said he washes his face every single day. So I'm putting that in into my midday routine. Tip number two. I want to show through an example. Yesterday, I was opening my laptop and I did not know why I was opening my laptop. Maybe it was to check Facebook, maybe to check email again. What I am starting to do is before I do something, I'm asking myself internally the question, why? Why am I turning on the computer? Why am I going on my smartphone again? You see, sometimes we just do things out of habit and sometimes that could be a liability for us because if we keep on doing this, it could be detrimental to the way we think, to the way even our posture. So do you know how to communicate with, with yourself, especially with what you're doing every single day, every single second, the decisions that you make? And tip number three is meditation. Meditation has helped me, and this is what I find really crucial about meditation, is to help me calm my mind down, as you know. Often my mind, I'm just thinking of so many things to do, and I just forget how to breathe. So, like a workout, here's what I started doing. Before I go into a work session, let's say I have to plan or I'm gonna read a book on communication, here's what I do. Like fitness, you know how you go to a fitness class? What do you do when you go to a fitness class? You just don't jump into the workout, you do a little warm up before and then you warm down afterwards. I started doing that with meditation. I started warming up, five minute meditation, and then I, for example, I read my book on communication or I go on my computer and check email. And after that, I warm down. That's why I also think fitness classes or if you have a private coach are so effective because you work really hard within that hour. But first, you have to get your mindset in the right place. If I go to a gym, I'm getting my mindset in the right place. I'm warming up, then I do the exercise. I warm up my muscles. Same thing when I'm doing work, and I hope maybe you can use this too. Warm up your mind by meditating, calming things down so you're not thinking of everything that you're doing. And then warm down at the end of the day so you don't have to work 24 hours in a day. You can do, okay, an hour work right now. Five minute meditation in the beginning, 45 minutes of work, and then five minutes of meditation at the end, and then, you know, a little break here and there. Here's tip number four. Now we're actually going into talking with other people. And it's a very simple thing. It's called method, it's called GEM. 
G-E-M. And this is what I do for every client, every workshop that I teach. And uh, eventually, you know when you learn something at first, it feels awkward. Eventually, you will start thinking this way. So the G stands for goals, E stands for emotions, and M stands for meet or exceed expectations. Before I meet with any client, I always try to assume and think of what is their gem. So I would fill it out on a piece of paper, or in my mind too, but usually I would fill it out on a notebook. Hmm, if I'm meeting with a, a client today, what is their gem? What's their goal in meeting with me? Or goal, bigger goal? Do they want to improve their public speaking? It's probably not that. They probably want to become a better leader, get paid a little bit more, become more successful, and public speaking will help them get there. But their goals are X, Y, and Z. Emotions. How do they feel or how would they feel when they would be meeting with me? Maybe they are a little bit hesitant. They don't know who this, is, who this kid guy is for the first time they're meeting with me. Or maybe they're pumped up because they are ready to improve themselves. So emotions, how are they feeling that day? Maybe I'm thinking they're tired. And meet or exceed expectations. What would meet or exceed the expectations by the end of our encounter? Probably if they have a five-step plan or maybe if they had a stage to express their emotions, right? Now, I'm only assuming this as I'm writing it down, but in the conversation, I am trying to uncover their gem. You see, the power in this is sometimes we forget to think of their emotions, what would meet their ex expectations, and most importantly, why are they meeting with us? What do they want to achieve overall? And just by asking them questions to uncover the, their gem, that's a good conversation already. So. The fifth thing that I am doing is I'm going on an app. It's called Vandito. It basically, it's a singing app. Now, I want to specifically work on my voice, and so you can download this uh, for free. Uh, Vandito, V-A-N-D-I-D-O, and they give you a bunch of um, uh, voice lessons, and every single day you can take a minute two minute because your vocal variety is so powerful. I have a friend who is a voice actress. And I tell this to people all the time. Last time I was in a meeting with her, someone else was talking. No one else is paying attention to that someone else. But then she started speaking and everyone's head started turning her way. She did not even say anything profound yet. It was the way she sounded. Okay, the last thing I am working on personally is I am trying to improve my communication skills by doing more YouTube videos, right? Every single time I, I do YouTube videos, I'm trying to be more succinct, I'm trying to be more clear, and I'm just trying to just go do it. For you, that means you might go on live. You might shoot a video, post it on LinkedIn. This is the fastest and best ways to work on your communication skills. This is the public speaking of 2019. Your audience is right there in front of you, in front of that screen. You can still engage with an audience. Um, same thing with going on camera and public speaking. At the very first time, I felt super nervous talking to this machine for no reason at all. I was thinking, how will that sound? Will it sound stupid? So again, these are the six things I am working on to improve my communication skills on a daily and weekly basis. What are you working on? I would love to hear below. Put them in the comments. And please subscribe to this channel where I am always trying to help you improve your communication and public speaking skills. Again, my name is Kit Pang, the founder of Boston Speaks. Have a great year.